The criminal justice system affects people from all walks of life across the country, including family members that go unseen and unheard. Newsy has partnered with The Marshall Project to bring you a series of stories called We Are Witnesses about the system and how it impacts these individuals and families. Tonight, we hear from a father who tried to help his son overcome his mental illness. Having lived with Morgan's mental illness for 15 years or however long it was, you know, this was another chapter in an, in an endless saga. When he was arrested and he was at Rikers, I was very driven to be the best father I could be. But on the other hand, understood the complexity of the problem. Morgan has had a difficult path since he was very young. He was first diagnosed with something called ODD, Oppositional Defiant Disorder, and eventually at 15 was diagnosed as being autistic. He grew up in, uh, in an affluent uh, uh, family and affluent community, but uh, I think uh, my experience, once you're part of the system, uh, there's no special privilege. The first crime he was charged with was robbery. Uh, he met some person on the street who said, let's rob a taxi. And they ran and stole 20 bucks or something from a taxi driver. My reading was he was trying to socialize with whoever this other person was. He just wanted to be one of the boys or, uh, and try to create a relationship because he suffered from a lot of loneliness. A couple of years later on, he began to have uh, paranoid thoughts, thought that a drug dealer was chasing him with a gun. I got a call from Morgan saying that he was afraid of this drug dealer and wanted to go back to prison because I had, he had been bailed out. And I said, well, wait a minute, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> prison's not the Hilton Hotel. You can't check in and check out. Uh, Morgan still was suffering from these paranoid thoughts, took some garbage from his wastebasket and started a small fire in his stove. He stayed in the apartment. They charged him with arson. He ended up being at Rikers for two years before the case was adjudicated, even though he had confessed to the crimes. I asked whether it wouldn't be more appropriate for him to be in a mental health facility uh, rather than uh, a prison. I discovered that the DAs, the judges, they don't have an alternative. Their only option is to send them to jail. That was the first time that I really began to understand how our country deals with people with mental challenges and mental illness. About half of the people that are incarcerated today, over one million people, suffer from mental illness. Morgan's been in for three and a quarter years. He has uh, had some run-ins with COs. He bought some uh, weed from the local purveyor of weed, probably one of the COs. He got caught with it, put in solitary. While he was in solitary, the trick that people in solitary do is they put their mattress against the little hole that they can see through the door in, which drives the correction officers crazy. About 10 of them beat him up, uh, bloody eyes. You know, he was heavily, heavily uh, beaten up. 